What's going on, guys? Filmington, late night, impromptu break, rip and chip for a friend. We're going to do five boxes of Topps Chrome Update Sapphire, so that should be fun. Let's get this started, guys, without further ado. So, eight packs, four cards per pack, average of one to three parallels per box and an off chance maybe one in 50 box chance of a uh, an autograph but all the autographs are the key names and they're numbered to 25 and less so massive potential with this product lots of heat being pulled guys let's get started what's going on john how you doing so this is for my friend sean p hey what's going on jake great lakes J-Rod, right off the bat. A lot of people really like this pose. I Oh, we got a color. We got an orange or a gold. A couple cards behind it. Yeah, a lot of people really like this pose. I do myself as well. Print run estimated on the base to be about 2,500 with update Sapphire versus regular Sapphire, which was around, I think, 1,200 or so. Uh, Nick Senzel, our first parallel. It's going to be numbered out of 50. That's a gold. <laughs> looks Looks a little orange from here with this lighting down here. So, not bad. Not really who we wanted to hit, but nice to pull a gold. Jan Gomes, we got our second parallel here, and it's Jake Fraley. So, Nick's teammate, Jake Fraley. Uh, I think he's, yeah, he's still with the Reds, right? That's going to be numbered to 50 again. That's another gold. Brad Hand, Eduardo Rodriguez. Hopefully this means that this is one of the hot boxes, but we will see. We've got Vidal Brujan, Daniel Norris, Chad Green, and Anderson Severino, rookie. Anybody uh, open any of this stuff yet, guys? Let me know what you think. Did a uh, last video I uploaded on the channel was a review of all the products from 2022 that actually came out in the calendar year of 2022. So I wasn't able to write this one. A little too early. Uh, but I did speculate. Ooh, we got a Jeremy Pena rookie. Going to sleeve that up real quick. I did speculate that potentially this release could end up being in the top three to five based on what I had seen with like a week's worth of breaks, watching the sealed prices stabilize right around 210, 220. Uh, it does seem like there's a small premium on sealed cases. You might be able to, I heard, maybe weigh the boxes. I'm not sure I haven't confirmed that um, in order to, for, for those autographs or for those boxes that have the three hits, maybe there's a, an ability to, to weigh those. I, I don't know. Um, Myself, I picked up three 10 box cases and a bunch of singles. A bunch of single boxes. Ooh, we got our CJ Abrams rookie. Very nice. Cano, Amir Garrett. Bobby Witt Jr. That's nice. Look at that nice color match. The Royals uniform. Um, Good friend of mine, Jeff Airtime, he's got a YouTube channel, over a 1,000 subscribers. He believes that Bobby Wood Jr. has a great chance to be the number one overall fantasy player. That doesn't always equi um, equate to hobby relevance, but if he's number one, that means he's doing some stuff that is um, impressive. So I would think that it would be uh, good news for his war increasing and power and average on a base percentage. Yuan Duran, rookie. Oh, missed a card there. A little sticky. That's Jorge Soler. Last pack of box one. We're doing five boxes. Granky on the back. Mr. McCutcheon. So we did not get our third parallel here. We hit the average of two. What's going on, Ronnie? How you doing, man? You're in the, the YouTube Hall of Fame, right? You got in last year, maybe? Are you getting in this year? Wit, 
Julio and Harris, who's going to be the most relevant in three years. Uh, I'm going to say J-Rod myself. George Kirby, this guy's pretty solid. Probably a top two or three starting pitcher that you can get from this uh, release. Going to be one of the guys I keep on my fantasy team just because I don't have many other options. But impeccable control. He's up there with Nic Nicoladolo, Mackenzie Gore. Um, Spencer Strider, is he actually... He must be in regular Sapphire, not update. That's my. Um, that's kind of what I think right now, but I'm not sure. All right, let's do this. We got Clevenger. We got an orange coming up. That's the orange. <laughs> All of mediocre. Got a couple guys from the Giants. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Sean. <laughs> oh, man. That is awesome, guys. That is awesome. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So these autographs fall roughly one in every 60 or so boxes. And we hit <laughs> the second best guy to hit. And that is fairly well centered. That's beautiful. On card autographs, of course, regular Sapphire did not feature any autographs. Um, never mind on card. And uh, this is sick. <laughs> I'd go nuts, but I'd scream, but my, my baby's sleeping. That's a, that's a huge card. So Sean's getting his money back. And Sean's a collector, so he's not going to be selling this. So makes it even more special versus. Somebody like me who would, you know, <laughs> cash in, but that's awesome. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be out of twenty five. So this is actually the uh, the highest printed autograph parallel that they've put in the in the sapphire box, but still. I mean, so when you do hit an auto, you're going to pull something that's an orange, number to 25 and fewer, and you're going to pull probably a top 15 name. So that's what they've done. The autograph checklist has only the good names. One of the worst names is Alec Thomas. So you know you're doing pretty good. Yeah. So actually, one of the a kid that I met at a show that I sell wax to, he met Bobby Witt Jr. on his vacation. Um, and he said he's like a really cool dude. Obviously, uh, Bobby Witt Jr. does collect cards. Um, he collects some of his own cards, so they had that uh, to talk about. And now he's he's turned the kid into like a Bobby Witt, I wouldn't say super collector, but he's a, he's a big fan. He's he's the top guy in his PC now. Royce Lewis, that is nice. Base rookie. Opening day Yankees. Can't believe we pulled that. 3,000 hits for Miguel Cabrera. Nice non-rookie card. We got Taylor Walls. We got a green. These are going to be numbered to 99, I believe. What's going on, Jabroni? Your comment came up, but I only have so much time to read them. <laughs> exactly. JP Sears. Oh, sorry. This number to 75. I thought it was 99. Dancing in Detroit. Ryland Bannon, rookie. Pro Bowl. Oh, my God. They're not, are they playing flag football this year? Or was that a joke? Somebody, I heard that from a Discord that I'm in. Uh, Jake Wallach, Andrelton Simmons, Archie Bradley, Eric Fetty. And uh, if you guys are wondering, these, these were loose boxes. These did not come from a sealed case, so. Uh, Orlando Arcia. Some of the other ones I do have are from a sealed case. Uh, a lot of those will be going towards my Blake Trinan gold. A lot of those will be going towards my uh, RC Explosion Box customers. Number to 50. Nice. At this point, it doesn't really matter who we hit for parallels because we already beat the odds. <laughs> uh, 
That's putting it lightly. Trevor Story, Boston Flex got Devers and Kike Hernandez, maybe. Uh, Luplo, Erod. What's going on, Henry S? How are you doing? I thought about voting for you for that uh, that YouTube Hall of Fame, but maybe if there were 15 names, I would I would have gotten to you. Cooper Hummel, did you get how many votes you end up getting, Henry? Lucas Sims, Anderson Severino, Seth Lugo. All right, still on the second box. Let's try to speed this up a little bit. Nestor Cortez, Cole Sulcer, Jake McGee, Jeremy Pena again. Very nice. At this point, probably the, the third best guy to hit. Well, I mean, the Wander debut's all right, but I'd say third best. After Witt and J-Rod. Torkelson's right there with him, though. Yeah, man, it's a good time. And uh, and given, like, the falling prices of wax, the RCEB is actually, uh, it's got some pretty good quality in it now. It used to be mostly, like, flagship packs, and now you've got, on average, I think, three Bowman packs per month and um, some other good stuff, too. So uh, I'm actually going to put Topps Chrome. I'm going to put this product in it, actually. <laughs> so that's uh, an example of a higher-quality product. In the, uh, in the pandemic period, no chance, but either the quantity goes up on a month-to-month -month basis or the quality will go up versus the uh, the past. Corey Dickerson, we got a Kyle Schwarber. That's a nice one. Number to 75, green. Very nice. Freddie Freeman. Got a gold coming up. That's going to be C.J. Abrams. That's a nice one, guys. That's a nice one. In my opinion, that's like a top seven or eight. Six or seven. Top six or seven rookie in the checklist. That's nice. What's going on, Ziggy? No, you uh, you want to get in? I know you're a big breaker, but you mostly stick with like the Panini stuff, right? Mostly football and basketball, right? Uh, yeah, man. I'll, uh, I'll save a spot for you because I know you've uh, given my channel many of shout outs. It's the least I could do. Um, I saw your recent video on the, uh, I think it was like five minutes talking about um, fanatic streaming. Now that's, and talking about how like the IP and uh, with uh, some of the existing streaming platforms, there's just not, a whole, it's really you're buying the, the customer base. That's what you'd be getting by acquiring one of those platforms. And, you know, that might be simplifying it a little bit, but I think for the most part, you're spot on. Fanatics will have their own customer base. They don't need the other customer bases. I mean, whatnots would be interesting, at least worth analysis, but you love all sports. Got our Torkelson here. That is nice. Let's leave that up. Right now, my number four top rookie in this product not very well centered, but that's okay. Pulled this earlier. Bobby Witt Jr., 25 auto for those that just came in a little bit later. This this video is going to be uploaded. Um, so try to make this a little bit more efficient. Oh, Jesus Christ. Are you serious? Are you serious? Sean pulled his second autograph. And <laughs> this is another good one, guys. This is definitely in the top half of guys you want, in my opinion, of the 15 or 16 on the auto checklist. So, again, these are loose boxes, guys. Um, 
do have three 10 box cases, but those are gonna be reserved for a, uh, different customers. RC Explosion Box customers, high end, and Jeremy Pena was in there too. That's our third Jeremy Pena base. Um, J Rod base is averaging about one in every 10 boxes. So we pulled three Jeremy Pena's, I believe. Or maybe it's two. I don't know. Maybe I'm just losing track. I'm going crazy, but. It'd be nice to pull a base J Rod, but we really can't ask for a bunch of more guys. Um, this almost makes me want to open some for myself. I haven't opened any for myself yet. <laughs> Got our Stephen Kwan debut. I picked up an autograph of him. Uh, did not pull one. Maybe we will pull one, though, given what's happening tonight so far, given the, the way our luck's going. There's our second Bobby Witt base card. Yeah, exactly. I uh, So when I buy loose boxes... Um, what I've been better at is I try to source them from as many people as possible. Just so like if you buy a bunch from one shady dude and he like weighs them or searches them or does something, I don't know. Some of these products are, that are newer, I'm not familiar with like how you can game the system with them. So I try to be a little bit safer, pick up no more than three to five from any one person and buy from like seven different sellers. Um, even if you have to pay a little bit more, and then you have to worry about when you're buying stuff that's like pre-order, you've, you've got to worry about feedback because they could cancel on you if the prices of the product go up. And that was my number one concern, actually. I was like, uh oh, if this product is as good as I think it could be, it could end up being like 230. It didn't end up moving much from there. Ended up kind of staying around the kind of where I paid 210, 215, in some cases 200. I think I averaged 209. Um, I bought some off the top's website too. But yeah, I was I was also worried about about feedback, so impossible canceled orders. But everybody's come through except for one one guy being a little uh, lazy with the shipment as it's sent it out yet. Not sure what's going on there, but uh, Glacius stars collide, couple twins, maybe Buxton and Correa. Martin Perez, Ryland Bannon. Yeah, Target doesn't take returns. Is that the case? And maybe Walmart does allow you to. I think I've heard that. Fortunately, I've never had to do that before. Uh, debut of Torque. Not much going on there. Yep. Sapphire is just like cracked ice. Looks like that gilded product is doing really well. Uh, the base cards, well, what they, the the, uh, the the lowest numbered cards are highest numbered cards. They're numbered uh, to one ninety nine. Those are like the base cards. I think we're look. You're looking at like nine thousand or so hobby boxes, a little bit more, about five hundred fifty cases, and that stuff's doing really well in the secondary market. Cards look pretty good. J Rod base card. People are making fun of like the lower body. Um, you can't really see it. Almost looks like it's kind of like melting. Somebody in Blowout Forum said that. Um, but for the most part, the cards look pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Nice design. A lot better than what people expected, probably. And a lot of people probably missed out on that pre-order. So that's what happens. Sometimes the sentiment just is so bearish before the product actually comes out. And it ends up being a missed opportunity for a lot of people. And Fanatic slash Tops are playing it right with a lot of these new releases, you know, keeping that supply down. So even if there's no, like, true demand, there ends up being, like, manufactured demand just from low supply. So at the end of the day, we can't tell how successful the product would be. Kind of similar to Cosmic Chrome. They ended up printing, like, four times as much as they did. Would people think differently of the product? Maybe they'd still like it. Who knows? I mean, the design would still be the same, right? Quality control would still be solid. Chris Paddock. This is going to be number to 75. Still to be released, Bowman's Best. Um, Tops Dynasty should feature a really nice RPA game used of J-Rod. Josh Harrison in here and another Jeremy Pena. This one's well-centered. 
Uh, we've got Bowman Draft Sapphire, which has been pushed back at least once, maybe twice so far, unless I missed it. That's going to be Topps exclusive. Finest already came out, but yeah, Bowman's best, and uh, at least a few others, I think. Sonic is going to come out soon, the Sonic Edition Lite. I think that the base packs will maybe have a potential to pull some of those silver. Um, they're not silvers, but the... Oh. Sorry about that, guys. Amateur hour here. The base packs and, and light might give you an ability to pull one of the uh, extended short prints from Topps Chrome, the five guys that they missed from regular Topps Chrome that were put into silver packs. I've seen at least one of those get pulled out of a um, Topps Chrome light pack. And Sonic technically is a light product too. So it should have the ability to pull those, I think. I think you're looking at 80 bucks to pre-order those right now. Design looks terrible, but who knows? Again, I mean, everybody got gilded wrong. Who knows? All right, this is the last box for Sean P. Absolutely killed it last time with Top Scroll Black and killed it again tonight. Luke Williams, rookie. No J-Rod base, but it's okay. We pulled plenty of wit in Pena. Did get a debut of J-Rod. So, I mean, a lot of people are kind of questioning, like, ah, is it still a good break at $220? And this is a very atypical result, so know that if you're thinking about opening any yourself but the fact that there is a value proposition that can be argued for a tops chrome sapphire product you don't usually get that and i don't think anybody has really said that since like maybe 2018 2019 big checklist 2020 um jacked up the print runs on that and the, and the checklist wasn't quite as good and the uh the rip experience wasn't great even when luis robert had value 2021 terrible checklist and they created update as well um and then and then here we are 2022 top scrum regular sapphire the rip experience was terrible this is nice got a torkelson debut probably the fourth best pull of the night from these five boxes something like that do a quick recap at the end with like the top four or five not much going on there But yeah, the fact that it's like 50-50, depending on who you ask with regards to it, is it worth opening at this price? Or is it worth maybe hoarding instead and stashing away? That's a very good sign for a Sapphire product. This isn't Bowman Draft. This isn't Topps Update, where you can actually <laughs> expect to get some value back. <laughs> um, but, but, but you can with this year's Topps Chrome Update Sapphire. So my opinion, Jace Peterson, that's going to be a gold... Number to 50 to round it out. Yeah, man. Brian, we absolutely killed it. Uh, let me top load a couple of these cards. I'll show you the top four. So uh, we opened up five Top Scrum Update Sapphire boxes. That's about $1,050-ish or ten seventy five dollars worth of value. Um, autographs are supposed to fall one in every 60 boxes. And again, we opened five. We pulled two autographs. So this is what we did. So I'm not going to show any of the base cards, but we pulled a CJ Abrams rookie gold number to 50. Spencer Torkelson number to 75 debut. And we got two autographs. O'Neill Cruz orange number to 25 on card. And a Bobby Witt Jr. Number out to 25. And this one's centered. 
O'Neill Cruz is a, a touch off centered. So, Sean P., congratulations. This is awesome. I'm going to open up some for myself, I guess. And, uh, yeah, great product. Um, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. I'm going to upload this one. Take care. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Filmington out.